Sup, 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 guys. My name is Ryu for the Yu-Gi-Oh! Council, and this is deck profile on Super Quantum, aka the Power Ranger deck, the Red Ranger, the Green Ranger, the Blue Ranger, you know how it goes, the Alpha. Uh, so let's go into this. I went with the Brilliant Fusion Engine this time around. It's a little bit different than the last build. The, the last build I will go back and retouch upon, but Brilliant Fusion is just so ingenious to use in this deck. Uh, for multiple reasons not only to hit rank fives and rank four is much easier because well this we're going to use a little bunny with um but just mainly to get that additional normal summon that sometimes you just need to pull off the giant megazord so before this video goes any further let me just quickly say the dual videos will follow immediately after this deck profile just so that's you know the dual videos are going to be in the same video kind of thing um so two gemini garnet normally you play one with brilliant fusion but I play two because of the simple fact I don't want to dead draw uh, into a de you know into a garnet. Two gem knights seems like the right ratios. It's nineteen hundred big booty, and then you can also use it for gem knight, uh, the one that's going to give you the double summon. So pretty much that plus this is going to equal your rank five really easy. He can just be used for rank fours. And then we have three red pilot layer. Three green, three blue, that's the core of the Power Rangers. You always run the three of each. One trick clown, one hat tricker. Hat tricker actually has been MVP, believe it or not. Even though you can't search it no more, it's still amazing to actually just have it in the deck. Trick clown can be dumped with Brilliant Fusion, which sets up for rank four plays with my green Power Ranger. Double maxi, the deck needs draw power. I was thinking of balance of judgment. I believe that's what it's called. It's the card we talked about on Tech Tuesday a few weeks back, where basically if you have less cards than your opponent, you draw more cards. It's a really good comeback card in this deck, but Maxi just works out a lot better um, for right now. I, I didn't have the room to put it in. So then three Fairy Alphaman. This is pretty much your alpha. You tribute him, and then you can go into any of the three. Basically, it's random, and the other two are being sent to the grave. I'll explain that during the combo part of the video. Two, Instant Fusion, because of Norden, but also because of Hands or Dragoon. It allows you to go into the, you know, the rank five there, the big lion. One for one, Soul Charge, three Upstart, three Terraforming, double Twin Twist, three Emergency Teleport, three Brilliant Fusion, Three of the field and one warning. Warning being the only track card we're going to run in this deck. For our extra deck, two of the gem knights because you're pretty much ever only going to need the two. Maybe just the one, but two just seems to be working out better for me. One Panzer Dragoon, two Norden, two of the uh, Giant Megazord, two of the Red Lion Megazord, two of the Aerodactyl, Pterodactyl. Megazord, I'm about to say Aerodactyl like a Pokemon. Uh, th two of the Dolphin Megazords, one Castell, one Direwolf. They're honorable kind of Megazords, I guess, in their own right. But let me roll the dual videos so I can explain it a lot better. So this clip here is going to break down the combo against Black Wings. It's going to be the easiest way to show it. Even though this isn't the gra greatest Black Wing uh, player in the world, needless to say. So first off, whenever you see him, you pretty much want to normal summon him. And try to get to one of your one of your guys. So here's what happens. You choose three and then graveyard effects. I end up getting the earth one. I'm sorry, the wind one. I did make a misplay because I could have special out the red one immediately because I control no monsters like a cyber dragon. I could have specialed that out, went for that, got green, then went for blue, you know, afterwards. Blue has the graveyard effect. She could put back up to three back into your deck. So it allows a lot of recycling. The red, pretty much, you can actually get one out from your, I believe, your hand or your grave. It's one of the two. But all the effects are going, I actually go for the blue because I'm going to make it work. Well, the, I'm sorry, I go for the wind. Because I'm going to make it work. I'm just going to absolutely make it work. Watch this. Look. I discard Trick Clown. So this way I can go into, uh, you know, my actual play here. Go for the upstart. Mercy Teleport. Let's go for Castell. Get rid of that there. Pretty much telling them GG. Top deck into a soul charge. I'm a sacky piece of shit. Yes, I'm aware of this. Uh, someone's going to say it, so I might as well say it. I'm a sacky piece of shit. It feels fucking good. I could have played an emergency teleport, got another material. So here's what the Megazord does 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I could have put 9 materials on this bad boy, maybe 10 if I was doing it right. Um, but pretty much, this is just a breakdown to show you how it works. So two or more when your opponent uh, and each effect stacks. 
Once per turn, during either player's main phase, you can detach one, exceed from this card, shift from one card, and feel from the deck. It's not really disgusting. Uh, fourth, of, uh, the four or more is unaffected by card effects except by Super Quantum. So pretty much your only out is going to be a Kaiju Summon. That's pretty much only out to this thing. And six or more, your opponent cannot add cards from the deck to their hand by card effects. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you get special three Super Quantum Mecha Beast. Exceeds basically the water, the wind, and the fire, and then pretty much go into another one. That's kind of how they work. So here comes the Zephyrus the Elite with everything. He's trying to go to that zero feint unaffected. Not gonna, you, it's not gonna, you know, be able to jump over. You're not gonna be able to deal with it. Honest is a good out to it. Anything like battle damage wise, you know, that you could put over damage is gonna be an out to it. But the problem is, you gotta remember you could shuffle a card back. And then with the wind, I could put one face down. With the dolphin, I can destroy back row. With the fire, I can destroy a monster. So they each have their own little effects. But commonly, you're going to see, especially with this build, you're going to see the wind and the giant Megazord together a good chunk of the time. Um, but I top deck that twin twist, and not that it's really going to matter. I go for effect for, for lulls so I can recycle stuff. But he after the Akaris attack, which is absolutely fine. Because I'm going to just put everything back. I'm going to snipe that back into his deck and finally put damage into him. Finally. Now he's down to one card. This is how easy the deck is to really play. Because you could just you could just basically make your opponent lose advantage. At this point, I'm not going to worry about anything coming out. Because after this turn, he's dead. That's, you know, it's it. I'm only going to have to worry about two cards. He's not going to be able to add cards. I can just snipe a card back in. I'm, I'm perfectly fine right now. Uh, with that whole thing. Top deck or guard it. Don't even have to like snipe shit back in. Just attack over for game. Let's show you a little bit more. So when I first released the deck. Uh, the first build. I, I was basically just doing it for fun. But since Wing Raiders is dropping out on Friday. It's pretty much what I wanted to do. There's what I was talking about. Getting the proper setup. Uh, to the whole thing. But I, I'm going to have Megazord status right here. You can see that it's going down. Uh, go for the, go for that, just go for the water, go for Insufuse for Norden, because I can. You just, uh, may, no, it's not just because you can. Uh, whenever you have Insufuse in this situation, you want to bring it out so you have an extra material. So it's going to be three, three, and two, it's eight materials under this bad boy. So as long as it stays under, you know, under the, uh, ab I'm sorry, above the, above six, you're absolutely fine with all three effects, and it won't be shit he can do. So, he actually plays close forest because he's playing that beast deck, man, that beast deck. But I got that hat tricker. Just to, just to help end the game. Just to help end the game. Some of you probably gonna go, but how does the giant Megazord deal with, like, a meta deck? Well, this is the only meta deck I actually went against, and it's pretty much the one meta deck I can't really stand. Because it's really simple, in all honesty. I'm sorry if I offend anyone who plays Cosmos, but it's true. It's a really simple deck that... It's easy to pick up and play, because you're just basically, you know, running into your opponent. That's the easiest way to, uh, you know, recommend Cosmos to people. This guy plays Raigeki. Here's the thing, and I will always say this. If you're online, take a second to, you know, just glance over with your mouse, like I just did there, and read effects. It's unaffected by anything that's not a super quantum card. And Cosmos, unless they have the honest drop, cannot get over this 3600 booty because he's unaffected by everything and I'm gonna be really smart here and not you know do anything stupid against him I'm gonna basically make him lose every resource possible and I know that's gonna be incredibly hard to do but he brings back the tin can uses tin can effects it's like bro your own effect got negated but thanks for the free card he plays style and warning on brilliant fusion that was pretty slop because he should have waited because honestly, Brilliant Fusion wasn't going to do jack shit. It was just going to give me, a, you know, a five in the grave that I can't, like five on the field that I can't even utilize completely. I just did it for shits and giggles. So he goes for Cosmojo, banishes out my water. That's absolutely fine too. You're just wasting your own fucking resources. But hey, feel free to do whatever you want. Goes for Good Witch and goes for Smack. Pretty much, I, I don't know if he was trying to, you know, mess with me. Like, hey, look, I have Honest. No, you don't. I'm just going to snipe that back in just in case you do, though. And that's going to be it. But I still have another duel for you. So this is against Galaxies. And this is going to be the final one. We're going to end it here. Because I feel I feel showcased the deck's power really, really well. And pretty much, if, if, you, like, if you don't get the Giant Megazord, it's not the end of the world. But it is an uphill battle if you don't get the Giant Megazord set up. 
on turn one. It's it's kind of like Quasar in that sense that your win condition comes from the giant robot. And you can see here I didn't get giant robot. I probably could have gotten to giant robot, which I'm actually going to explain it. That infusion in my hand, I could have brought out Panzer Dragoon. Um, and that would have overlaid into the lion with this. And I could have went to it. I forgot that it doesn't require the Power Rangers to go into it. They're pretty much generic exceeds. So keep that in mind when you're, you know, opening Wing Raiders. That these guys are generic exceeds. And this is actually a pretty damn decent rank 3. But they will get the benefit of having their, you know, Super Quantum Buddies under there. But at this point, I'm like, oh crap, he's probably going to go for... I don't know why he went for Galaxy Cyclone. At this point, I was like, oh crap, he's probably going to go for, uh, you know, the big problem card. He's going to go for Cyber Dragon Fady. But he didn't. So, <laughs> not that it's even a problem card, just like going to problem card. I special the Hat Tricker, I go for the Summon, I go for Add, and then I go for Giant Megazord. Which I could have done last turn, but... It is what it is. Norden into Garnets, into Castell, into Snipe, into 5,600 points of damage. It feels so good when you put that giant Megazord fucking OTK status shit going on. Goes for Galaxy Eyes, Fortune Dragon. And again, people, please, always make sure to read cards. Unaffected by even the Galaxy, and he rage quits at that point. So. Make sure when you see this thing, you know how to get over it. You got to bait out the exceed material. They're pretty much going to just beat you down with it. Um, if you could jump over it with an honest do it immediately. So there's that. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoy the content, make sure to subscribe for more. More of the Wing Raider deck profiles are going to be rolling out. Another Super Quantum. Uh, Phantom Knights I'm working on right now and Raid Raptors will be out probably last but there are some stuff that I wanted to do when Breakers of Shadow came out that I pretty much didn't get to because of the flu so I'm going to be catching up on that too so stay tuned it's all coming thanks peace